Lesson 18 of our series on Psalm chapter 119. We're getting closer to the finish line, and hopefully this series has been a blessing to you. I have an idea for my next little short series and a couple holiday themed lessons as well coming up to close out the year. It's hard to believe the year is almost over with. Today we are covering verses 129 through 136 and it's the Hebrew letter A. The theme for this section is the radiant nature of the law or God's word to evoke in us yearning, love, and prayers for mercy. The Word of God provides many things to the believer. It is a source of hope and comfort. The Word of God provides wisdom, knowledge, and it strengthens our relationship with God. It also evokes mercy, as stated by the theme of this section. When we get a view of how God is patient and loving with us, then we cannot help but acquire the same attributes. We are undeserving of his goodness. We give him our brokenness, our shame, our heartache, and in turn, he gives us love and mercy. It's not reciprocal. Normally you do something good for someone, someone might do good in return. It wouldn't do bad to thank you for the good that you did. That would be silly. But this is the beauty of God. It's not a fair trade. All the junk and our trash we give to him. In exchange, he gives us beautiful treasures. There's an old song, and it says, All I had to offer him was brokenness and strife, but he made something beautiful out of me. And since God has shown this mercy to us, the question becomes, how can we not show mercy to others? How can we not love one another truly? Not just in lip service. You talk a big game, but can you back it up? And it's difficult. Because I know people sometimes can be a nuisance. They can get on our nerves. And some people are very difficult to love. But if we're honest... I think sometimes we're difficult to love. I think sometimes maybe we get on God's nerves as well. I'm sure that he gets frustrated with us constantly tripping over the same obstacles or acting with the same bad behaviors and attitudes. As we make our way through this section, look for the theme of mercy scattered throughout the verses and how we can incorporate that into our lives. Also, notice the intensity of this section as the psalmist hungers and desires for the Word of God. Such a fervent passion unlike any of the other sections that we've seen. Keep these things in mind and let us look at the first verse. Psalm 119, verse 129. Thy testimonies are wonderful. Therefore, let my soul keep them. The psalmist states that the testimonies, or the witness of God, is wonderful. 
word wonderful here means extraordinary. So when you think of extraordinary, you think top tier, the best there is. Even the very word itself is extraordinary, so it just goes beyond the ordinary. It's not plain Jane. And I would even say that extraordinary exceeds excellent. God's word is in a class of its own. And because this is the case, then the psalmist desires to keep his word. He desires it. He holds it close. He yearns. He longs for it. While there's not much here in the scripture in the way of mercy, we do see the psalmist making a simple statement of the greatness of God's word. And that's the reason that he keeps it. And we can express to God our love for him and his word. In just simple statements. They don't have to be fancy or eloquent. Well, that's still permissible. I was just looking for a sincere heart. It's hungry for him. Hungry for his word. Loves to speak with him. Spend time with him. You begin to see right out the gate, the first verse, the exuberance that the psalmist expressed. He wastes no time beginning this section of verses with a joyful shout. God's word is the best. And that is so true. There's so much into it, in it. And I've read the Bible for many years. And I love it. I love how I can get so much out of it one time to get something completely different out of it the next time and so on and so forth and if it's not part of your daily devotion or daily life i highly recommend and i encourage you to get into it summing up this verse the witness of your word is extraordinary therefore my whole being yearns to keep it Psalm 119, 130, the entrance of the words give us light, give us understanding unto the simple. The psalmist continues his exuberance, expressing the power of the word of God. The simple entrance of God's words shed light. They bring revelation. Imagine the doors open. The Word of God takes one foot across the threshold and instantly revelation and understanding. So you don't have to be a theologian. You don't have to have a PhD. Those things are fine and good. What I'm saying is, is you can struggle with academics. You can have difficulty understanding things. You can have trouble comprehending. You pray and ask God to help you. His word will bring what you need. Because it is alive. And it's powerful. And too many people fear. Fear. I use that loosely. The word of God because you know, it's too hard to understand it's complicated and there are other translations that kind of make it easier and I caution you on those because they do leave out scriptures they do reword things that are a little iffy so just 
caution you. And you can see my other lesson on the Word of God that I have recorded on my channel if you're interested in that. But God will open up His Word to us. He will help us to understand it and illuminate it. He will meet you at the point of your need and explain things to you and understand. There are various depths to the Word of God. There is a surface, and then below that, another layer, and then another layer. And you can go as far as you want to go. A lot of my learning in the Word of God is just spending time in it. And I've come to understand it. I've picked up a few books and read those that are right alongside it and give you the history and the culture or you pick up a commentary and get people's kind of takes on scriptures it's these things that will just kind of help you the bible says the study that sh to show thyself approved a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and when you set aside all these worries and fears about the bible just get into it. Give yourself over to God in prayer. And like the scripture says, he'll illuminate his word. And he'll bring to you truths and revelation. I've mentioned this verse in other lessons. It's one of my favorite verses because it reveals to us how important God's word truly is. And we may not understand many topics business and leadership and medicine and psychology etc we may not read many books but read the bible or grab a bible listen to it in audio form and follow along just take in the word of god all the wisdom and understanding that you're going to ever need is found in its pages. And that wisdom and understanding is going to aid you tremendously on this pilgrimage. In fact, it's essential. Because without it, let's just face it, you will get lost. You'll find yourself somewhere you don't want to be. So spend time with God in prayer and in his word. And... Let the exuberance the psalmist had for the word of God that we've seen so far in just these two scriptures fill your life. Take joy that he has imparted onto us his word. Psalm 119 verse 131 I opened my mouth and panted for I longed for thy commandments. Here the reader gets the impression of the psalmist running hard after the word of God. In full stride, he's giving it all he's got. He's panting. He desires to catch up. To get a hold of the word of God. There's this in intense yearning that the psalmist has. And as we know from other lessons, the word commandments means the authority of God. So the psalmist... We can look at this maybe as another reason for his hard running is that he wants to stay with the word of God safely under its covering. Because there's a covering when we're submitted to God and we're under his authority. It doesn't mean that we're exempt from bad things. It just means that God will watch over us and help us. Those that belong to God are obedient and submissive to his will. Not pushing it back against it. The open mouth in the scripture is also said to be a way of expressing hunger. Looking at it from that angle, we can say the panting is the thirst. So the psalmist is hungering and thirsting for the word of God. As one of the other scriptures in the psalm says, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord is good. His word is good. It's like honey to our mouths. It's sweet to the taste. The psalmist hungered for God's word. He thirsted for it. He desired to be under the authority of God. 
didn't mind being a servant. And we'll see that here in a few verses that he was a servant to God. And it's okay. We should be servants to God. We don't need to rebel against him. He knows what's best. He's not going to harm us. The psalmist yearned intensely. He knew that safety alone exists in God. So whether we're running hard after the word of God or we're feasting or on it or drinking it in, here the message is clear. There has to be an action. We can't say that we want the word of God and just leave it sitting on our shelf on our shelves. We gotta hunger for it. We gotta take it off the shelf, we have to read it. Even if you don't read it all in a year, just read a chapter a day. Or a few verses, just something. Begin to cultivate that hunger and that thirst. Just open the pages of God so that He can speak to us. Psalm 119, verse 132 Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me, as thou usest to do unto those that love thy name. You receive the first real glimpse of mercy. God, you treated your people with mercy. So please treat me the same way. There's no usage of one of our words, commandments, judgments, precepts, etc. However, one can imply that the mercy that the psalmist understood was both spoken of in his word and was clearly displayed and how God treated his people. When Israel exhausted the mercy of God, only then was judgment sent. Time after time, as you read the Bible, we see they made idols, and they worshiped them. Instead of having only one God and multiple gods, they even sacrificed their children to these idols. God is patient and he sends warnings and he did he sent the prophets to warn them told them to get right and listen get right and listen he does his best to get us on the right track however ultimately the choice is ours it's not going to violate our free will unless we advocate it like we've seen in 1935 maybe to go on the path like commandments if we refuse to get back on the true path the right path we're supposed to be on in this pilgrimage bad things are going to happen we have to be obedient and submissive to god to his word if you want him to be merciful to us he will it's going to be only for a time. While he's patient and long-suffering and that mercy might be for a while, that doesn't mean that he's condoning our actions. We can check ourselves. Because eventually there will come a day and enough will be enough. We need to take the time that we have and spend it in the Word of God. We need to make sure that we that daily that we are belonging to him that we belong to him that we love him when you pray spend time in his word and express our love to the king of kings because he loves us we should reciprocate that love he wants us so let us love let us want him just the same Psalm 119, verse 133, order my steps in my word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. The psalmist asked for the ordering of his steps according to the word of God. So the word of God uh, is laid out a path for us. The psalmist wants his steps to be within the confines of that path. He journeyed on this pilgrimage. He needed the word of God to make sure his steps were sure. The same applies to us. Yeah, we can think we've got it all figured out. 
And I've even been at that point where I thought I could do this on my own, and I was sorely mistaken. We can't. We need God. We need His strength, His love, His mercy. We need the Word of God. We need these things. Or we're not going to make it. We need God to make sure that we're not getting too close to the edge and some of the difficult paths of this narrow path, this narrow pilgrimage that we're on, and then we slip. And then we slide down the cliff, or worse yet, we hurt ourselves. The wicked were those people whose feet had slipped. It says, let not iniquity have dominion over me. Apparently, the wicked had dominion over them. Dominion, iniquity, ruled the lives of the wicked. And the psalmist knew that this was possible, this could happen to him. He wasn't exempt. So he pleads for mercy, asking God to guide his steps, to make them sure. Oh God, please don't let iniquity dominate or rule me. He said, God, please let your love, mercy, and peace guide me. Let your word or the promise of your assurance be there to comfort and establish my going. God, plan my way, organize my life according to your perfect will. When we submit to God in such manner on this pilgrimage, and we look to his word, then he'll be there to help us and safely guide us. And mercy doesn't mean that we have to do something wrong to get it. Well, that's certainly one of the ways mercy is applied. Mercy means that he'll provide what we don't deserve. We don't deserve this amazing, awesome God to be with us love us and he's been merciful to be with us to hold our hand to go before us to shield our way and it's so beautiful how God just watches over us and takes care of us that's what he does because he wants that intimate fellowship with us and I hope that we desire it too give your steps to the Lord Push aside iniquity, take his word, the word of God, and choose it today. Psalm 119, verse 134, deliver me from the oppression of man, so I keep thy precepts. The oppression of man can oversee our lives. The precepts here is overseer, so again, wording choice is very intentional. We can fear others and simply comply so we don't upset them. We can give in to the crowd so we're not persecuted for our love for God and his word. We can be underneath the eye of man, letting him oversee our lives. Or, we can let the word of God, precepts, God oversee our lives. Which will be. It's going to be both. Who's governing our lives? The psalmist chose God in his word. He said, Deliver me from those who oppress me, God. They're cruel, they're wicked. They seek to harm me and belittle me. I'm going to keep your precinct. I'm going to oversee your word and give my life to you. In turn, you'll be my overseer, not man. I'll let you govern my life and guide my steps, like it said in the previous verse. And even good people can oppress us. They're sincerely wrong. They have a particular tradition, they mean well. It's not found in the scripture. And try to get us to come under that. No, I'm not suggesting rebellion. I'm just suggesting that we be mindful. Be respectful. But ultimately understand that your allegiance belongs to God and God alone. And as you walk this journey... You have to trust in God and know his voice. He will speak to you through his word. So that you know the path that you're supposed to walk. Because we have 
an obligation to steward this life that God has given us. We are responsible for our lives. No one else is. If we misuse, we're going to have to answer. So just be careful today. In all ways, that you don't become a people pleaser. Be a God pleaser. Because ultimately, in the end, that's what's going to matter. That you do what He asks you to do to the best of your ability. Psalm 119, verse 135 Make thy face to shine upon thy servant. Here we are, the word servant. Teach me thy statutes. God, please make your face to shine on me. Let the light of thy countenance be towards me. God, smile upon me. And God does. When we obey him in his word. The psalmist wanted the assurance that God was pleased. And it's okay for us to go to God and ask, Can you please with me, God? He might say yes, give you that reassurance. But sometimes there's areas that we need correction. And I'm one of the people I love to please God. It's a true joy. And I hope the same can be said for you. I love being a servant. It's wonderful. To do the work of his kingdom is really what my life's centered around. To raise others up to invest in them to pour into them and see them grow and flourish let his face shine upon you as you walk this path this pilgrimage to eternity let him teach you his word inscribing it on your heart oh what yearning and longing it is to see God smile upon us. He taught his word. God is so amazing. And it's such a joy to serve the King of Kings. To bask in the light of his countenance. The glory of his face as he looks upon us. And lavishes his love on us. Psalm 119, verse 136, rivers of waters run down mine eyes, as they keep not thy law. All that exuberance, and then he gets to the end and kind of leaves on a somber note. But it is a good reminder. It's a different yearning. Because while the psalmist knows his life, and he's exuberant, heartbroken for others he wants them he's yearning that they would have the same love for God and his word but it's clear they don't verse says they keep not his law a broken covenant with God and it hurts when we see others walk away it hurts when we see others violate his commandments and do as they please we can't control anyone all we can do is instruct them and pray for them, pour into them. Ultimately, the choice is theirs. But do keep a tender heart towards others, though. Don't become callous and cold and self-centered. Let your heart break for what breaks God's heart. Yearn to see lives impacted, changed for the glory of God. Do your best to be a witness, shining your light for others to see. That's our mission. As we encounter others on this pilgrimage, walk with them, showing them the true path. And let them know it's the best way. It's the right way to go. And if they ultimately choose another way, or if they leave your side and leave the path, and encourage them to try to come back, but they don't. Just keep them in prayer. 
sometimes you just got to take your hands and let people go and learn from themselves. And hope they come around. It's difficult. It's part of life. This final verse really displays the mercy of the psalmist. The mercy that we should have for others. This life we have walking with Christ and ingesting his word is not only about us. We need to have compassion and mercy for others as well. Just as God has for us. Throughout this section, we've seen the intensity of the psalmist as he yearns for God's word. We've seen the theme of mercy and how it applies to us and to others. And so I ask, let us take what we've learned in this lesson, let's apply it to our lives, and let us grow. We have everything that we need. God's given us all the tools. If we just leave them in the shed, they're just going to sit there. But we got to grab them, we got to get to work. We need to stay in constant communication with God, getting to know Him more and more each day. May God continually bless you as you yearn for his word. And may he be merciful to you. And may you be merciful to others. Go with God and be blessed. Next week, we're going to cover in lesson 19, verses 137 through 144. Which is the Hebrew letter, Zadi. Till then, have a great week. God bless.